What's good, guys? Welcome back to yet another episode of Podcasts at Royal Music Marketing. Got to hear my guy, Zach, with me. Zach, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, bro. Thank you for you? being a part. Well, you're a part of our office, but <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you, you know, shooting these yeah. podcasts pretty much, you know, brings up our page as well. So, like, today's topic that we're going to discuss about is uh, basically a revenue generating model for different artists out there. Because, you know, in our experience, you know, we work with a lot of people out there that are musicians, independent. And, you know, the problem that I face there is always the financials. Exactly. Because majority of these people, you know, they're living off their, you know, daily jobs and, you know, it's really hard, tough for them to invest into their music with, you know, all of this marketing and since this is a really competitive industry these days, you know, it's really tough. So, like, share some insights about how, like, an artist can generate revenue for themselves. Yeah, so, first thing, you know, what I, this is what I think. Revenue is, you know, one of the main hurdles out there, you know, for upcoming artists. Because these guys, you know, <laughs> The fact that they work hard, the fact that they're doing their jobs, they're matching their lives and everything with their music and all, you know, it's, it's crazy, but they're still not making and generating revenue from it. Obviously, at the end of the day, you know, we, we, like, we take things step by step, but at the end of the day, revenue is one of the most important things for, for an upcoming artist specifically because they've got huge expenses, right? Like, what do you say? They've got to make music videos. You need good money for that, True. right? Uh, you've got to upgrade your equipment you know, time by time, everything. And one of the most important things, you gotta pay for marketing as well. You gotta put money in marketing, everything as well. So, you know, as I said, there's a good budget for all that stuff. So I think revenue is one of the most important things out there and to, you know, generate that revenue. I don't think like these guys, artists and everything should focus only on, you know, uh, rely on royalties or, you know, YouTube revenue. They're good at it today, but we both know. Spotify yeah. specifically is literally close to nothing when it comes to, you know, paying their artists, right? Yeah. Right. So, I think there are certain you know uh, strategies that we, as a marketing company, use to you know get an artist to a decent revenue level. Uh, for example, like you know uh, e-com stores, email marketing, you know music licensing, everything. And people don't really know how like money making money is easy these days. That's 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 one of the best things out there. You know, people don't really have that knowledge, right? And that is basically what we are for. Yeah. So uh, TikTok, TikTok is booming these days really so you know they can make some good money from TikTok as well and the first and one of the best ways I think is e-com stores the mm -hmm. reason for that is you know you get paid directly and you're actually selling a product that's actually gonna benefit and you know uh, connect you with your audience that's what mm -hmm. I think because you sell something else at the end of the day you're, gonna, you're definitely gonna make money from it but selling your merch it connects you with your audience in a better way. It's basically like you're making a brand within yourself. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And that's the best part. And, uh, you know, uh, what do you say? The e-com stores we do, like, it's not like we make a store, a website or something like that. It's a full-on, like, you know, process that we go through, you know, talk to the artists and everything, design their, uh, you know, actual products and everything, whether that's a t-shirt or that's a hoodie or whatever, you know. We design their products. And the best part about this, uh, you know, uh, process, this strategy is that every single thing is automated. Literally, you don't have to do anything manually, we and the artists as well. It's all automated, you know, AI generating stuff and everything, and we go with multiple other strategies and all. So uh, I think this is the best way to make good money, uh, you know, from actually selling their, you know, uh, products, right? Now, the way we do it is basically, you know, we design a store, we put the products there and everything, and the best part is we integrate that store with the Spotify profile of that artist. That is the mm -hmm. best part. We integrate that store, so they don't have to put money like an extra money for marketing their own store because yeah. they're already getting a good audience, a good fan base on that uh, you know profile, the, you know that Spotify account. So they can actually divert and they can actually convert their listeners into paying customers. That's the best part out there, you know. And the, you know they don't have to wait three, four months for the royalties to come in. They can literally make some good money, like going directly into their bank account, you know. And that's the best part. And you know there are other ways as well, but this is what I think one of the best ways out there and easiest ways actually, you know. So yeah, that's what I think. Well, yeah, obviously it makes sense to me because, you know, it's basically like you're merging your uh, revenue with your passion, which exactly. is that if you've got an audience coming to listen to your music, well, you can convert them into your, you know, potential paying customers. And I think that is one really genius way of, you know, generating revenue as well. Uh, though I have one question for you, uh, like you were talking about TikTok, okay? and. Uh, like TikTok is really booming, is it what you say? But how would you compare TikTok 
to YouTube Shorts or Instagram Reels? Like, what do you think is more effective? And what do you, what do you think is more effective for an artist, like specifically? All right, all right. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. TikTok uh, videos, you know, Shorts, Reels, whatever, you know, they're pretty much the same thing. But at the end of the day, there's one big difference between these, you know, all these platforms, TikTok, for, uh, you know, specifically, because here's the thing, TikTok was the first uh, platform out there to introduce short form, uh, short form videos, right? Now there's this like, you know, uh, war going on between these three, four platforms, you know, who's getting the best views and everything. You know, recently YouTube Shorts just announced a good revenue generating model for, uh, you know, their Shorts as well. And TikTok has already did, did that, you know, like a couple, years, couple years, years ago, yeah. right? Now, yeah. the best uh, thing about TikTok is the algorithm. Because its algorithm is specifically designed to, you know, push your content to a new fan base. Mm -hmm. You know, literally, like I've, I've got multiple examples. I've got people that I'm working with, they didn't have the TikTok before. You know, I made them make it, and now, like literally, they're, they're this guy I'm working with, he posted one single video, zero followers, zero likes, nothing. He posted his first video, and for some reason, it got up to ten thousand views. Wow. There's a, there's a reason for that. It's, yeah. it's it's not you know coincidence, right? Obviously, so. The TikTok algorithm, in my opinion, is designed to push your, you know, your content, your videos to a new fan base. You know, it doesn't matter if you have a fan base already or not. And that's what I think for artists, because obviously at the end of the day, we as a marketing company work with multiple artists out there, different genres and everything. So TikTok is a huge platform, mm -hmm. one. Because Instagram and YouTube, in my opinion, they are good. Reels are good. Reels are booming right now as well. YouTube shorts are good as well. But at the end of the day, you know, what's happening these days is, for example, YouTube. There were uh, YouTube, there was no sharks a couple years ago, right? Yeah. Now people were uploading like long form videos and everything, 10 minutes, 10, 12 minutes, eight minutes and everything. Now what's happening on YouTube shorts is they're like snipping those videos and just uploading those videos, uh, you know, on the shorts as well. So I think market for music is on TikTok. That's what I think. Cause mm -hmm. TikTok is, there are some sort of like that stuff going on, on TikTok as well, no doubt, but you know, to some extent, right? And in my opinion, music is definitely gonna grow on TikTok. That's what I think. And at, the fact that its algorithm is designed in a way to push your content to a new audience, that's obviously a cherry on the cake, right? Yeah. So yeah, exactly. TikTok, at the end of the day, I would not say like only go with TikTok. Obviously, uh, you know, the more the better, right? So go yeah. with shorts, go with reels, go with TikTok. TikTok is, in my opinion, one of the best platforms for an upcoming mm -hmm. artist to grow on. That's what, that's my opinion at the end of the day. And that's mm -hmm. what I've, you know, experienced. That's what I've learned. Absolutely. Totally makes sense. So. For our viewers, well, I want to, you know, tell them that we as a company, you know, we want to outstand other people out there because we want to be like, we want to go in a different direction, basically, on how we can actually help artists, which is why we're shooting this podcast to let our viewers know that, you know, all our campaigns, everything that we're going to do, you know, from this point forward is specifically designed to generate revenue for the artists Absolutely. because that is like a requirement these days because you know every other company is running campaigns and you know so many people out there are just working through the, the funny part, yeah. uh, in my opinion the funny part is they're charging them a hundred dollars and they're literally their goal is to make them pay you know these companies like yeah. 30 for a lifetime you know at the end of the day what i think is marketing is a process hmm. i'm not saying it's not take time you know obviously at the end of the day marketing is all about having consistency and patience True. right it takes time but marketing is in my opinion, this whole campaign that you're running, you know, it's just a push that you're giving to the artist, right? Yeah. So I would, you know, what I, what I think is we need a couple of months with the artist, consistent months basically, mm -hmm. not like a month and then a break, a month, two yeah. months and then, you know, it's not, not like that. Yeah, if we work for like six, eight months, you know, consistently, I think we can, you know, give that yeah. artist a push where he can grow algorithmically after that as well, you know, yeah. after that time frame. At the end of the day, marketing is lifetime. It's not, it's, marketing is something they can't leave, you know, but at the end of the day, to some extent, like there, there's, there's this kind of push that you need to start, right? Yeah. Because all these big brands, Nike, they got millions of customers. They got like, they don't need to market. The reason they spend millions of dollars every single, you know, year, just for that specific, you know, thing, marketing, yeah. they make, you know, videos, they make YouTube videos and everything, they post their ads. The reason they spend that much money on it, because it's because marketing is not about giving you a couple of thousand or millions, you know, views or streams like that, you know? It's all about growing yourself as a brand. Sure. Enhance your online presence, that's what I think. You know, to let the people know that you are, all, you know, you are out there doing some stuff. So that's, that's what I think. And, you know, in my opinion, revenue plays an important role in this. Because at the end of the day, revenue is one of the most important things. And, you know, as I said at the start, you know, these artists, 
they're handling multiple things at one single time, you know, their families, their jobs, their music. So it's, it's hard, you know, we already know that, right? True. Now, True. you know, if a good, decent revenue comes up in the game, obviously it's going to motivate them as well, you know, in terms yeah. of, you know, extending the quality, enhancing it and everything like that as well. And that is the reason our campaigns are focused on, you know, generating a revenue stream for clients as well. Hmm. Because at the end of the day, if they're putting in some sort of like, you know, uh, budget in their campaigns, if they're investing their time, their money in for a couple of months, they're supposed to get some sort of revenue, mm -hmm. financial growth as well. And that's, this is what, like not a lot of people think about it, but this is important. And that's mm -hmm. the main reason we as a marketing company focus on it and you know, make sure that along with focusing on some actual numbers, we focus on some actual financial growth as well. True. Yeah, makes sense. But yeah, like you were talking about, you know, all these big brands. Funny story though. I just read a report recently, uh, you, know, you know, McDonald's, how popular it is worldwide. Yeah. And that report, I, I'm not sure what uh, platform did I read it on, but that report, I specifically remember uh, McDonald's pay almost like quarter of a billion in its marketing. How crazy is that? It's like two fifty million dollars <laughs> just upon their marketing. Man, that's just crazy. Now people, I mean, people like us will think, yeah. why the hell are they doing it? They already got. I mean, by the end of the day, marketing is important. It's for necessary. Lockdown. It's exactly. really important because you know every other day they're you know introducing new products, new burgers, or I mean, all kind of other shit. But the point is that they invest, and that investment actually. Uh, does not give it like a direct return, but indirectly it's giving them more customers, more exactly. people trying out new products. And it's a circle of life basically on how things work. Even if you talk about your financials, you know, if, you, if you're just making like $10,000 a month for you instance. So <clears throat> in that case, you know, there is a cycle of money that you're going through. For instance, you know, you're paying your rent, okay, you're paying your insurances, then you're paying for your groceries and stuff. Now, these all things that you're paying for, what, what are you getting in return for that? Well, if you're paying your insurance for, for your car, basically, well, you have a car to travel on. It's paying you indirectly back. Okay, it's not something that you're paying the insurance or uh, you're paying for a car or you're just paying for your groceries. But at the end of the day, it's paying you indirectly. For yeah. instance, if you just eat something, you're fulfilling your stomach. <laughs> you tell me for that. So it's as simple as that. Even though, you know, I had another example of, uh, you know, generating revenue for these artists, which is Instagram. I mean, oh, right. Instagram uh, does not, you know, directly affect in terms of, uh, you know, making money, but... But now it's paying through reels, by the way. Yeah. Like, reels, by the way, it's not that much. It's so not that yeah, much, but yeah, like yeah. there's another way of it, okay. which a lot of people ignore. And all right. I personally want you and, you know, all our artists to focus on, uh, like getting that blue ch check, blue tick, the verification mark really plays an important role here. All For right. instance, like, and just imagine, okay, there's an artist and he gets verified, okay, he's got that blue tick. Obviously, the way you look at him is going to be different to a person that does not have a blue tick. It's the human psyche. He's a verified yeah. artist, well, he, at least he's got something. Now, on the other hand, well, when a person gets verified on Instagram, you know, there are a lot of opportunities that grow his way. For instance, I've got this friend in Atlanta, Martin, he's basically an RJ, okay, and one day I was speaking to him and I told him that I wanted him to interview one of my artists. And there was this one question he asked me. He asked, is this guy verified? I was confused and I said, what do you mean by verified? He said, is he verified on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or any of these social media platforms? I was uh -huh. like, no. And he was like, no nah, man, sorry, you can't do. <laughs> and I asked him and I asked him like, what is the issue? Why? Yeah. So, so he's like, uh, you know, every artist that we interview, you know, he might some have some sort of a credibility before, like he must have some sort of a solid existence before, you know, we can interview him. <clears throat> so I was like, okay. And I was like, uh, why do you think this blue tick really plays an important role? He says that once we introduce an artist over a radio show, that means that people are going to search for him. Okay. And we tell, you know, their viewers, they tell their viewers actually that to search him, follow him on Instagram, subscribe him on his YouTube and stuff like that. So if an artist, for instance, has good music, he's a good, he's a good fan following. That means there is a chance that people are going to be interested in him. Exactly. So uh, that is one important thing that, you know, you get a really good recognition from outside your society, basically. Secondly, I believe that one of my really close friends as well as an artist, uh, she's a Latin girl and uh, 
she recently got ver verified through our company and uh, she got into paid partnerships you know i hooked okay. up i hooked her up with uh, one of these uh, brands fashion nova jeans and i'm not sure if you've heard about it or not but fashion nova jeans is basically an online store that you know sells out jeans for girls and boys as well so she's also into this fashion side of it as well and she's got a great fan following of about like 15,000 people all organic and she has that blue tick she makes music she has really good content and last week she texted me that she got paid a thousand dollars just to post a picture of herself on instagram what and hell? she was just wearing those fashion nova jeans that's it Fashion Nova basically paid her a thousand dollars per post, post and yeah. that, that's crazy. I mean, that you can generate exactly. revenue, you know, you get into more paid partnerships and, and that is just the start. That's, that's how merely just the start. Exactly, yeah. And, uh, you know, one of my uh, current clients, uh, Zo, Zo the Scholar. So uh, what happened? He just texted me today, actually, and he was telling me that uh, he actually collaborated with one of those rap pages on and you know he just posted an Instagram story he's got about like 11,000 followers and you know on average he has about like a thousand eight hundred likes on his pictures and that particular post the collaboration post has over like 5,000 likes oh, and he's saying hey. that you know he's getting so many messages from different pages that collaborate with him and you know they're just going crazy for him and he's not even verified as of now so imagine if he gets verified He's collaborating. He's into paid partnerships. I mean, how many how many dollars that you can generate for yourself? You don't even work at all. So that's crazy. So this is, I believe, you know, like the verification process. It actually plays a really important role here. So something that you know a lot of artists need to focus on because, in my opinion, you know, social media is the biggest weapon that you've got because it's not like in the '80s, you know, where people just used to hear your music. That's it. People actually know you through your social media. I mean, it's as simple as that. Like, it's your life, if, bro. Yeah, yeah. Life. So even if you talk about, you know, different people, like for instance, uh, you know, take any footballer. Okay, there's, there's this guy called Cristiano Ronaldo. I know a lot of people that follow him, but I can bet you that you know these people. I can bet you that these people do not even watch his games, but they're just following him to check out on his lifestyle. Feel me? That's how social media plays a role. And that guy has over like 500 million followers, half a billion followers, man. <laughs> a person with the most fan following, it's crazy. Shit. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. So yeah, another question that pops up in my head is regarding email marketing. I mean, okay. like we use email marketing in our methodologies in order to you know, market music and as well as you know, market different things and stuff. So how do you think that this can play a role uh, when it comes to generating revenue for artists? Like, how do you think email marketing can actually pop up, you okay. know, the revenue stuff? All right. Now, to understand how you can make money from it, we got to understand what exactly is email marketing, right? Yeah. So it's it's a process to, you know, uh, market some sort of news or whatever, you know, product or updates, you know, through a software that you use to a bunch of emails, not like 10, 20. You can, I'm talking about 10,000, yeah. 100,000, a million, you know? <laughs> so that's the thing. Now, a couple of months ago, email marketing was easy. It was a piece of cake because there these softwares, these websites, on you know, on Google, they could pay like a hundred bucks and you know get that software, and you could pretty much send like unlimited emails, you know. So that was easy. It was accessible for every single guy out there. And the problem now is, you know, uh, with email marketing, is that you know the algorithm, the you know, uh, like is triggered now. The reason I'm saying this is because when you run an email marketing campaign, a lot of people, because, you know, uh, for businesses like us or for artists that we run an email marketing, uh, you know, uh, for, these guys are sending emails to new people out there, right? Now, there are two things that we need to focus on when we're talking about email marketing. For email marketing, you've got to have a website. That's important. The reason, you know, you can run more email marketing without that as well. But at the end of the day, the response is going to be trash after literally like a month because Email marketing, when you run an email marketing campaign, whatever software you're using, at the end of the day, it's gonna land either on iCloud.com or Google Gmail or, or stuff like that. So there's an option. I don't know if you, uh, you know, uh, uh, if you're familiar with spam, right? Yeah. That's that's a huge, you know, like, you know, what do you, what do you call it? You know, a huge problem for us. Yeah. You know, and for these artists as well, at, at the end of the day. So the reason for it is because these guys you are sending email to, they they don't really know you. Yeah. You don't know who they're getting emails from. Obviously, they're gonna report you as spam, you know, and that's a problem. 
when you have a website, when you have, when you're sending emails to like these guys who actually know who you really are, you're gonna get maximum response. Not only that, you're actually getting you, your repetition, you know, uh, to the next level as well. Because it's all about it's all these things that we're doing, marketing, email marketing, every single thing. It's kind of like you know indirectly, uh, you know, related to our lives as well. Like just like you know when we go to the gym, right? We warm up first. Yeah. The reason for that is because we can't give our body that you know like you know sudden jump you know that you know i'm gonna yeah. i'm gonna bench press like 100 kilos right now so that's that's the thing we got to go step by step send a thousand emails first to see what the response looks like ten thousand again as well so that's how it works now what how we can use email marketing for you know generating revenue is you know there's these guys uh youtubers filmmakers game developers film producers all these guys there's one common thing music Music is one of the most, you know, important things out there in, I think, pretty much any business, you know, you're running an ad, you gotta, you gotta need some sort of music in that yeah. ad as well to make that more engaging, right? So music is everywhere. And we, as a marketing agency, you guys, you know, uh, as an artist, you guys as an artist can take that as an advantage. Wow. How? So these guys, they need music to make their content or to produce their content, right? Now, all these like big artists like Eminem and all that, you know, they charge mm. millions. <laughs> they charge a yeah. huge sum of money. And these new businesses, these new, you know, artists or YouTubers or whatever, they can't spend that much money. Mm. Just like you guys, you know? So that's the thing. Now, we charge them a decent amount. We email more, like we have a huge data pool. We don't like, you know, get that problem of spam and everything because we have already have a huge data pool. We don't go with these websites and pay hundred bucks for these campaigns. We have our own software that we have literally designed by ourselves. And that is the best part. We use these softwares to like, you know, run a full on email marketing campaign in a way that, you know, we get the maximum conversion rate and then what that means, maximum revenue. So the, the, uh, the way we do it is we send emails and everything. Uh, and on the back end, we get a response from that email. So let's say we, get, we send a thousand uh, or hundred thousand emails. Obviously, it's not going to be like all these guys are going to text us back, right? So let's say the conversion rate is like 40%, 40,000 people texted us. We have a full on team dedicated for that purpose. What they do is they take calls with these guys. They explain what exactly, you know, uh, like who exactly is the artist, what they do and everything. And they charge them a decent amount, you know, and all that money you make that goes straight into your bank account. We don't take any cuts. And that is, I think, the best part, you know, about this whole camp. You, you don't have to pay percentages, guys. Mm -hmm. That's the best part. So I think uh, e-com shorts are good, but this is like, if you want to make like certain revenue, easy money, this is the way to go. I, I, sure. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. Makes sense, yeah. Because, you know, at the end of the day, what matters is that, like, in my opinion, what I believe is that if, uh, like, what an artist prioritizes about his music is that it, if it's being heard, number one thing, because that's really important for him. Yeah. Because if he's making music, you know, he's investing his time, investing his money, and, you know, time is actually money. So, yeah, at the end of the day, what they need is that they, their music is being heard, okay? And if it's being heard, you know, they're going to get returned. And if it's being heard organically, which is a really important part, guys, that you need to understand that you're not using bots, you're not triggering any algorithms, you're not working with any sorts of funded streams because that really messes up your whole situation. For instance, yeah. if you've got like a million views on one of your tracks and that does not entail any legit human being or a person listening to that song, what's the point yeah, of absolutely. it? Absolutely. What are you going to do with those <laughs> Just numbers views? on the screen, yeah. right? <laughs> that, that's basically a no-show. So. The thing is that you want to work organically and you're right about this organic marketing process it's basically a slow process it's like i would put it like you know it's a natural process yeah it's going to take time okay it's going to take a lot of time but the beauty about this whole process is that it's going to be consistent with you like as long as you're consistent with your music and as long as you're consistent with your marketing it's going to be consistent with you because you know i, I normally give this example to a lot of my artists you know if i tell them that Consider me as one of your average listeners, okay? And if, uh, you know, I like one of your tracks and how many times do you think I will listen to your track? Like maybe 20 times, 40, 50, 100 times? Max, yeah. yeah. And I'm going to be bored of it. Exactly. And I'm only going to be engaged if, you know, if the person is already, you know, consistently dropping new songs. Because, you know, if that person is just 
you know, dropping a song in a year or in six months or in three months, you know, I'm going to fall out of it. It's not going to help. Okay. It's so yeah, not. it's basically like if you're consistent, I mean, even the general rule of life here is that if you want to be successful, you know, there's this one letter word, no, sorry, one word they want to go with. And that is consistency. Exactly. If we're consistent in literally doing anything, you know, yeah. you're successful. Exactly. Let me, let me ask something yeah. here. Marketing, a lot of people take it wrong. They think that marketing companies like us, they boost their, you know, boost the speed of them getting, for example, viral. Mm -hmm. We're not doing that. You can go for and post content. You can go for on your own Instagram ads and, you know, you can probably, you know, get to that level as well. But the reason people go with us is because we're doing it the right way. Yeah. That's the thing, you know, we're not boosting your, you know, uh, viewers. It's, as you said, it's a natural process. Yeah. It's still going to take time. Yeah. But the way we're doing it, that's different, yeah. you know. It's not generic ads. It's not like generic, you know, running like uh, playlisting a song to some generic playlist. It's a whole process. They have a whole team even, for it. You know, playlists do not, you know, play any sorts of role exactly. in a person's growth because playlisting is like, you know, you're getting into herd of sheep and you want yourself as a sheep to be recognized out there. <laughs> so there's no point of that. Impossible. You know, yeah. you've got a, a playlist, you know, that has over like uh, a million listeners. And on that playlist, you've got over like a hundred tracks. Yeah. Like out of those million people, how many of those people do you think will listen to your song? And you're paying a really good amount for that playlist because normally, you know, these playlists that we work with have about like 20,000, 40,000, 50,000 listeners. That's it. But the point is that you know, if these people are just paying, you know, a big amount of money just to get playlists, play. it's, it's going to It's not going to help them at all. Because the reason these playlists have millions of likes or listeners is only because they, these players got like three or four famous songs and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Those songs are taking all the, you know, streams and everything. Yep. You're not going to benefit from it. As an upcoming artist, playlisting is not going to help you out. Yeah. I mean, that's what I think, you know, for upcoming artists. And, you know, uh, marketing is, is a whole word. People yeah. think that it's only ads. It's that's, not. that's not true. It's, not. it's a whole process. You know, you got PR, you got, you know, multiple Email things. marketing, lead generation, tar targeted ad exactly. campaigns. Well, there is also another type of it, which is, for instance, you know, people, I know a lot of artists that, you know, when I talk to, they say that they run ads. Okay, there's a difference with that. People running ads by themselves, and then there is this term called target-based ads, exactly. which means that, you're running target-based ads, you know your audience, okay? You know where these people lie, their age group, their genders, their ethnicity. So you know the people you want to target. So if you know your audience, well, you can run the ads by yourself. I will be, you know, totally pleased with that if a person is doing all this stuff for themselves. <laughs> I think it's just like you're selling some ice cubes in Antarctica. Yeah, <laughs> I think. Exactly, that's a perfect example. <laughs> yeah, it totally makes sense. So yeah, I mean, that, that is pretty much it. I mean. Thank you. You have a good day then. All Appreciate right, let's. It, I'm Ash. Take care.